Now let us greet our expert on spider behavior. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Peter Witt. Number two. My name is Peter Witt. Number three. My name is Peter Witt. All right, and listen while I read Peter Witt's scientific synopsis. It goes as follows. I, Peter Witt, give drugs to spiders. I do it to see the effect it has on their ability to weave webs. The disorientation that occurs is obvious, even to a non-scientific observer. Take a look at this web woven by an adult female spider. It is a typical, well-formed web. But after a dose of amphetamine dissolved in sugar water, this smaller and less regular web resulted. Here is an even more striking example. This web is the normal, or what we call, control web. Then, after a dose of dextroamphetamine, also known as speed, this highly irregular web was made by the same spider some 12 hours later. Pep pills, tranquilizers, hallucinogens, LSD, all affect both the quantity of the silk and the skill of the weaving. It certainly is a, gra a graphic example of chemical changes wrought by these drugs, and also an additional warning to all of us of the dangers involved in excessive drug use. Signed, Dr. Peter Witt. <laughs> We'll start the questioning with our always welcome guest, Larry Blyden. Thank you, Gary. Uh, doctor number two, is a fascinating thing to begin with spiders. Why did you pick them? Well, uh, I was actually not so much interested in spiders, but in drugs. And I couldn't try them on human beings, so I, I thought I should ta start on uh, spiders. Okay, number three, uh, why is there a parallel between the behavior of spiders and the behavior of people? Is their body chemistry similar? Or? The body chemistry is similar, and the behavior of all living beings has some similarities and some differences. Okay, and number uh, one, were you able to verify similar effects on other animals and on people too, or is it only in spiders that you've worked? Yes, it is possible, but it is more effective with spiders. Why is that? Well, because you are able to test uh, their reactions the, uh, within the weaving of the webs and the uh, disorientation, the distortion of the web as it, they produce. Okay, number two, it said that the silk was also of a different quality. How did you see that? Well, the silk is uh, much thinner if the uh, uh, drug is strong and uh, uh, the threads may uh, tear apart if the wind goes through them. Number three. Uh, Larry, we're going to go from you to Peggy. Number three, did the spiders like the drugs? They love them. They love them, okay. Now, number two, where do you carry on your experiments with spiders? Well, uh, we can't carry them outside, but uh, in the laboratory, in the aluminum frame. But where is your laboratory? My laboratory is in McGill University in Montreal. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Well, don't bring those spiders down here, the dope fiends. Number one, <laughs> do, does do, do, do the drugs affect their reproductive uh, capacity in any way? No. It's, there's no genetic difference in the, from LSD in the spider? No. Oh, well, they always say there are in people. Number three, I never knew spiders made silk. I thought worms made silk that ate lump and ate lump mulberry leaves. Is that real silk that spiders make? All spiders make silk, yes. Well, then why don't we use that kind of silk instead of going to Japan? Because you have to have a few thousand spiders to make one pair of stockings. Well, you, you make me a nice pair of stockings out of a few spiders. <laughs> Number two, are your spiders expensive? Oh, no, they're quite cheap. Where do you buy spiders? Well, I get them free. From whom? Well, from entomological institutes. Oh, then they just give you the spiders. Oh, they give you the spiders. Number three, do you use any ordinary household type spider or black widow spiders or what? Well, they have to be spiders that build geometric orb webs. Number, oh, I got a good and question about takes where they... down to Bill Cullen. Uh, number one, well, you, you determine, of course, uh, for these webs, uh, the regularity has, has a physiological effect on the spider. But can the drugs you give these spiders be habit forming to the spiders? Only as far as you can determine? No, only for a certain period of time. The drug wears off within a period of 24 hours. Uh, num number two, uh, if you find, uh, how long does it take your spiders to get back to normal again? In other words, to kick the habit, or uh, whatever spiders do. Well, if the spider gets LSD or something like that, it takes about 
12 hours, but on the speed, if I may use that word, 36 hours. Number three, aside from the amphetamines, have you used any other uh, uh, drugs in your experiments? Oh, yes. Uh, hallucinatory drugs, uh, sedative drugs, and a number of drugs that influence behavior. Have you gone uh, number three with anything as, uh, as uh, drastic as heroin, for instance? That... I never used heroin. Uh, is, is that number one? Do you work on a grant, a number one? Do you have a grant that uh, enables you to do this work? Yes. And number two... <laughs> And finally, Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. And uh, number one, I saw a picture of this spider and, and his uh, aberrational web a while ago. Can you tell me how long ago it was? How long ago what? I saw the picture of the spider and his web that had been woven after LSD. Uh, within a period of eight hours. No, no, I saw it some time ago in a magazine. How long ago? Oh. Number two, do you know what I mean? Uh, y yes. Yeah, how long yeah. ago did well, I see it? I th I think how it long was... ago did the experiment come out? Well, uh, I think it was last fall. Last fall, I see. And uh, number three, have you ever tried giving uh, these spiders, let's say, some other kind of material that would make them weave these peculiar webs, such as gin, <laughs> scotch? Uh, they wouldn't accept alcoholic uh, substances. How do you know? Uh, because I tried. Huh. Oh, oh, poor things. <laughs> number one, is there, is there any a kind of spider who weaves a web that is not geometrical? Well, none of them are geometrical. Well, They're I mean, only irregular. Said, number two said that he only got spiders that wove geometrical webs. But the webs are all irregular. <laughs> They're all irregular, even before LSD? Yes. Well, number three, are you going on to anything else now? Uh, we're trying other drugs, and we also test behavior in general. Behavior in spiders? And there goes the bell. It is time now for us to mark our ballots without discussing amongst ourselves how we're going to mark them. And we mark them for number one or number two or number three. And if we're all marked up, Larry Blyden, you get first vote. Boy, those guys are good. I tell you, if I was going to experiment with a spider, I'd get all three of them. I voted for number one because he sat there smirking away like we were all idiots. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a, a one, Sean, Peggy? I voted for number two because I thought he was sweet. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Bill Cullen. Well, I think number two is sweet, but that's certainly not going to influence my vote. <laughs> number three said it, he, they couldn't get the spider to drink, and he didn't use the right technique. As, as simply, a spider will not drink alone. Uh, <laughs> and all my spiders really live it up. Number one was so sure about there, that not, no, uh, there being no such thing as, as a purely regular web that I voted for him. That's a doctor's thinking. Spiders even got a club called AA. It's Anacrids Anonymous. <laughs> Especially for spiders. I like, it. I like that. <laughs> Kitty? I think they were all were wonderful. They could all be scientists. But I voted for number one. Number two said that this thing came out last fall. I think I saw it at least a year ago. So I voted for number one. Who is that all by himself on two? That's Peg, huh? Oh, nah. um, well, the votes are all in. Will the real Dr. Peter Witt please stand up, sir? How about that? <laughs> And so they get 500 big dollars because we stumped the panel totally. Number one, you were marvelous. What is your real name? What do you do? My name is Bill Bryant. I'm director of finance, graduate school of journalism, Columbia University. Uh, <laughs> number two, sir, what is your real name? What do you do? My name is Ike Iran, and I'm a publisher. Publisher. Dr. Witt, I guess you just don't look like the kind of fellow who hangs around with stone spiders, I guess. <laughs> where, where do you do your work, sir? In Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. At, uh, what, what is the institution? Uh, this is the mental health department there. I see. With, uh, with, uh, with the city. Uh, well, thank you very much, Dr. Witt. It's been a fascinating thing and a great visual demonstration of what happens. Thank you, Dr. Witt and Impossible. I don't think we ever actually established the reason that Dr. Witt used spiders. And the thing is that if you use, let's say, mice, you can see them stagger or do whatever they do, but when they finish staggering, the evidence is gone. 
whereas you give it to a spider and now then he creates evidence which can be preserved, which can be photographed, and which you can pass on to other people. In other words, it's not transitory knowledge, and that's why spiders. And by the way, according to one of the stagehands I was talking to, he looked at the picture of the spider web, the crooked one, he says, that spider today is now a pusher in a barn up in Dutchess County. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, friends. We'll see you soon. Our central characters today will receive a lovely dress from Sue Brett, the house of many moves. Sue Brett dresses in ensembles that create excitement and fit to perfection. Promotional consideration provided by Best Western Motels, the nation's largest chain of 1,200 fine owner-operated motels in 900 cities from coast to coast. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, a Mark Whitson, Bill Tottenham production.